If you haven't heard of Overwatch, and tch, let's face it, I doubt you've heard of that little indie title at all. It's a team-based FPS released in May of 2016 by gaming giant Blizzard. This marks the first new IP from Blizzard in almost 20 years, straying away from Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo. The game was first announced in 2014 and had a ton of hype surrounding its next year and a half in development. Now that it's out and the collective have hopped aboard the Overwatch hype train and are riding it to complete oblivion, let me be the first to say this. Fuck this game! This game's a fucking TF2 clone! It's little fucking shitty babies and you should inhale a shotgun! This, game, this game's pretty fucking good. The game currently centers around 21 unique heroes with four classes. Attack, Defense, Tank, and Support. Each character has their own strengths and weaknesses to create balance in the game. For example, Tracer has low health, but trades that off with high speed and the ability to warp several feet ahead of her instantly and even reverse her own movement. Torbjorn can lay down turrets that keep a point defended, at the expense of being prone to explosives and snipers. And Mercy as a support is vital to healing teams, but is super limited with her own attacks and health. Yeah, if you haven't already guessed, some of these characters are kind of ripped from other games. But, each character in this game is specifically tailored to serve a few purposes to support the team, and not be ass-kicking lone wolves that go in for kills and ignore the objective. Though, if you play your character right... There are currently three different game types and 12 different maps, each map taking place in a particular area that goes along with the characters and lore of Overwatch. And trust me, you think Dark Souls or Kingdom Hearts has some complicated lore? You haven't seen shit until you've gone on a forum or a subreddit with theories about the backstory of this game. I'm not even gonna go into detail or even try to explain it here since there's nothing in-game that does anything other than reference elements of the story. Though things such as items in a spawn room and dialogue between characters are neat little touches. Well. You sure take to this bad guy thing easily, don't you? And you sure know how to play Boy Scout. That aside, each map is unique in its layout and provides great points for players using certain heroes to set up shop and create a choke point. Or to counter said dipshits by pushing through to get to the objective. And speaking of heroes, their own special quirks and abilities have ways of complementing each other. For example, a defensive team reliant on a Bastion or Torbjorn can get the big-ass wall shield of Reinhardt as cover while blasting enemies away. Or a Mercy on any high damage character can use her damage increase ability to make the person buddied up with her an absolute killing machine. Or that a Reaper can team up with another Reaper and be edgy as fuck! The variety and specific playstyle of each character forces players to adapt. Communication is key. This really is one of those games that needs you to be on good terms with your teammates in order to get anywhere. And like I said before, no lone wolving. Unless... Each character seems, for the most part, fair, and the gameplay is balanced to not make one player more powerful than the rest. Every character has a counter. It puts everyone on an even playing field and supports the dynamic of good teamwork. A rounder game isn't over until it's over. A good team can pressure or defend to the very last second. Yeah, but to, to have a leveling system like Call of Duty where you can- <laughs> Overwatch doesn't bog you down with a leveling system and upgrades and new weapons that put you a step ahead of anyone else. Instead, the leveling system rewards you with loot boxes that change the game cosmetically. Rewards like skins, sprays, voice lines, <laughs> What the fuck? Emotes and victory poses. Rewards in this game don't give you a lead over others, they just help you express yourself as a hero you want to be. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what's... You wearing your little explorer outfit? You gonna go in the jungle and get yourself some more bananas? Yeah, eat that peanut butter! You little monkey slur- There are a few gripes I have with Overwatch. As it stands, the game does have a very good amount of balance, but there are a few characters I feel that have some pretty bullshit abilities and moves that kind of breaks the flow of games for me. The play of the game mechanic is also kind of fucked. You can play an amazing game, shutting an entire team down on your own, and then watch in anger as Bastion gets for killing two people! Fuck you, dude. Also, since games of Overwatch go by pretty fast, you'll cycle through all the modes and maps before you even know it. With only 12 maps and 3 game types, the game's current lack of content can make it pretty stale pretty fast. But, since the game is so fresh, there's always time for Blizzard to update it with new maps and even new characters. It's already been confirmed that updates like that'll be absolutely free, so here's hoping that means more content on a regular basis. Overall, I think this is a game you should go out of your way to buy if you want fun, fast-paced, engaging, and rewarding team-based FPS. If you want fast, responsive controls, fun and balanced gameplay, awesome characters, great sound design, and an emphasis on really participating in a shooter, this one's for you. 
I've logged in days worth of gameplay now, and I intend on playing much more for many years to come. 9 out of 10!